ready for your punishment, slave. I sometimes scream out, no. When really, I mean, yes. Yes, yes! And this is why we have the safe word. Until we hear the safe word, we will not stop. She's not a Christian! No! Hey, before we get the show started, I just wanted to plug some things. Some cool shit's happened over the last couple weeks. Uh, last Saturday at the Laugh Out Loud Comedy Festival, I got to perform along the sides of the uh, legendary undisputed heavyweight champion of comedy, uh, Andrew Dice Clay, which will be airing on Showtime. The rumor is uh, it's going to go on Showtime in February, and uh, it was a fantastic experience and a, a dream come true. And also, uh, this Sunday, that's Sunday, September 14th at 8 o'clock, I'll be performing at the, uh, where am I performing? At the Hollywood Improv, that's right, uh, at the Thunderdome Comedy Show. And then um, this weekend, I think I'm going to try and put together some spots uh, in Vegas. I'm going to go out and watch uh, some shows and see some friends. And outside of that, on September 23rd, it looks like, I'm going to be doing a, uh, a roast battle at the comedy store with a comic I, I don't really know too much about. But uh, I'm going to look into that and see what we can pull out of it. So the roast battle, midnight, September 22nd, at the comedy store in the belly room. I think it's one of the most popular shows at the store right now. And I've been called out to ba do a battle like a, a rap style battle, but in the context of stand-up comedy, just talking shit. It should be a lot of fun. I'm always up for a good fight. Uh, but today, uh, my guest on the show is Brad Brake. Uh, I met Brad after uh, my first performance, actually, in Vancouver in June 20th, 1996. I did my first show, and uh, me and Brad quickly became friends and terrorized the, uh, the city of Vancouver for uh, close to three years, and uh, this is what happened. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, Brad, how you doing? Good, good. <laughs> I always, every time, I don't know, I was talking to, uh, I ran into a comic friend of yours uh, from uh, from Seattle, and he works for, uh, we'll give him a little plug, uh, Caviar Gold uh, Marijuana Company, and uh, I was telling him about most of the phone conversations that start off with you it always starts off with a hello, and then there's some sort of tragic thing that can't be ignored, and you've got to get the fuck out of town like the house is on fire or something. Yeah, no, the house is always on fire, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, hey, this is uh, Jason Rousen. Welcome to the Safe Word Podcast today. Uh, my long-term uh, comedy comrade and friend uh, currently living in uh, Seattle, uh, Brad Brake. How you doing, Brad? Yes. Hey man, pretty good today. Yeah, yeah. How you doing, man? <laughs> well, let's let's t kind of give our audience here uh, a little backstory on us. When I I moved to Vancouver in uh, in '93, I started doing stand up comedy at the um, Plaza Nations uh, in Vancouver, Canada, where the uh, Yuck Yucks was there. And um, but I really went in trying to find a kind of avenue to get into the comedy scene because I moved out to Vancouver to get into stand-up and really didn't know, I didn't have any kind of examples of anything rather than what I saw on television. And um, I started doing stand-up and I met this guy the first show at, when it was Brad Brake. And I remember seeing you the night before come out on stage with this, uh, with like a monkey... Um, a puppet thing, but it was holding on to you, <laughs> and it had nothing to do. Yeah, with the man, show. I should bring, I should bring <laughs> that back, old school. <laughs> so tell uh, the people I at home. Come on stage with a stuffed monkey and kick it. It was incredible. And I remember you'd lay him on his back and say, "I'm not performing uh, until I somebody shits in this monkey's mouth or something like that." <laughs> and you'd lay the puppet God, on stage. God, I love monkeys. Oh, uh, it I was love hilarious. Monkeys. But um, you are, you are a Canadian, but you, you like myself live in uh, the United States. What happened? Like, where did you start? Where was your? Uh, what's your hometown? What was? What got you in the stand-up? The shower well, rape. I started in Canada, in uh, Eastern Quebec. The first time I went on stage, Bonjour. I was at the Comedy Works. 
in Montreal, and they got on, and they and they did really well, and uh, and uh, oh. I immediately got addictive. What were you going to university or something in in Quebec? I was going to college. I was suggested to go and do stand up because my acting in Shakespeare <laughs> uh, was few and far in between. I didn't want to wear tights. Nothing against the Shakespearean Elizabethan theater people, but. Yeah. It kind of wasn't my scene. I was wearing tights you and, you know, and I don't have a big penis. But yet you're a big fan so of wrestlers. I couldn't, I couldn't get that across to the audience because they come there to see the bulge. And I was like, I was tired of doing foot of fixation come I would complain against my child holding a skull. I, I just didn't. I said, I need to just beat the skull and do comedy and, well, and more of be a, creative that way. You, and then it just opened up so many doors yeah, you, doing stand-up. I mean, I've been broke. I've been on welfare. <laughs> I've, yeah, it's been <laughs> trying to hang myself. Well, we, um, I it's remember been, when I'd done my first show, you were there in, at the, uh, the comedy Yeah, club. we hit it off right away. We took a comedy so, a course. Yeah, we studied. Seth Rogen was in it, and Damon Schritter, and Mike Mark Cooley was teaching it, mm. and he was like, oh my God, what, these two clowns <laughs> in my class it was smoking dumb and cigarettes. Dumber. Yeah, I think, could we smoke <laughs> in the like, club? Remember we were blowing the smoke didn't like we, you can blow like a shotgun? Didn't you shake us? It's a visual, you people. It's a visual. You blow it in, and what the what the fuck is wrong with these guys? There's something seriously wrong with them. Yeah, I remember you, you took a swing at uh, Seth Rogen and took his lunch money. They were funny. They were <laughs> funny. And, uh, yeah, and then, uh, I mean, I was inspired by people like Andy Kaufman, yeah. you know, and Wildman. people like that. And I, I wanted to go into wrestling. And the thing is, is like that was my. If I do comedy, maybe I can get into wrestling as the first comedic wrestler. No, you got to go backwards. And you start he, off as a wrestler, and then you and then he would comedy. come out and interrupt people when they were, and then be like, be funny. Mm -hmm. And then he'd get his ass kicked every week on Raw. <laughs> <laughs> and it would be like Stone Cold, but not Stone Cold, because Stone Cold beat me years ahead of me. You know, I wanted to do that. I was so involved in wrestling. Yeah. Do you remember the time we were at Yuck Yucks in Hamilton, Ontario, and you were doing a show, and then I came out of the audience and hit you in the head with a table yeah, tray, yeah, yeah, the and tray. then I knocked you out, and it was all set up. And then I pal drive you. Yeah, that was fucking awesome. I have that on videotape somewhere. I'm actually in the process. You getting do? Some... Yeah, if you yeah. have that on video, that is. I the got audience that. didn't know what to make of it. They were like, "What the hell is this guy?" Yeah. Why are we... <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. It was a damn good of... pile driver. I remember seeing it. We were watching it oh, on the bus. You can hear people go, oh, and neither one of us have a car. Do you, do you have a car now? I still haven't learned how to drive. I'm 42 years old and I've never driven. Oh, well, I have had a car, but I don't have a car right now. <laughs> what I you do, got robbed. I have a camel. You have a camel that you ride around Portland <laughs> or Seattle? <laughs> yeah, I did. I go to my gigs on a camel. Didn't you see a kid get you know, shot in the face in Seattle or something? Remember you called I me? I hitchhike. I take Greyhound. <laughs> no, you know. Didn't you tell and, me you saw some kid get you know, shot gotta, in the face? Yeah. Did it's you? tough not having a car in, in this business. <laughs> no, listen. It's, it's just tough having, not having a car in life. Get, get a unicycle. Oh, I've, the unit, you could do a unicycle, or I could just, you know... If you could pick one mode of... Blow people to get around. What, what mode... How would you... If you had a dream transportation, would you go by, like, pony or... Would, I could see you ride an ostrich. 
if I had a dream destination of comedy or just anything. No, 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 no. By transportation, if you could ride an animal, what animal would you ride around town? Oh, man, there's so many, Jason. Uh, I would, I'd like to have, like, a giraffe. That would be pretty cool. Because like I would a full grown up giraffe. all the freaking space on the road. A giraffe? <laughs> I can't. For some reason, I... Nobody would be able to see around me, and they'd be like, oh, man, I want to pass this giraffe, but I can't see. You know, I'm afraid I'm going to hit it. What, um, and then, you well, know, okay, I would go ostrich or ostrich, or I'd get like about 60 wiener dogs and a dog sled, or like a chariot, a, 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 a chariot, a chariot with about 60 wiener dogs, and just whip around town throwing empty whiskey bottles at people waiting at the bus. Yeah, that's a perfect, that's a perfect, you know, <laughs> I like to have a bison. That's badass. If you could control a bison. They look, they look mean. Holy. And they could just gallop through, knock over people on mopeds and cyclists. You could clear a Christmas lineup at like a, a Walmart with a bison. You could just plow right through everybody lining up for Cabbage Patch Kids. Oh, it'd be, it'd be great standing in line at Starbucks. And you'd be bison. just like, you just plow through with the bison, and then you get the bison something to drink. But, but, you know, by city, city bylaw and stuff, you're, you could be fined if that bison takes a huge shit into Starbucks. You'd have to clean that oh, up. Man, you'd be cleaning up bison Starbucks shit. Starbucks is all like day. crack for me. I need coffee. See, I quit drinking and drugs, everything, mm. right? I'm a big wuss now but i'm okay with it but i need my freaking coffee. coffee i want coffee i know a lot of like, people that get sober coffee, not ass coffee not ass to mouth coffee not shitty welfare coffee Dunkin i donuts. want the starbucks mocha grande and uh, that's <laughs> what i want you're you're into like speed like red bulls do you do red bulls and shit Oh, I love Red Bulls. Oh, my God. See, when I was drinking, Red Bull, I discovered vodka. Red Bull and vodka. See, if I have Red Bull and vodka, it feels like I'm on crack. That's great. I've never done crack before, but that was my that was my, my ticket. If you drank... Like, that was the, if you, but then I quit everything, and now I just drink Red Bull. If you chugged a wine barrel full of vodka Red Bull... That's like one blast off a crack pipe, so I've heard. You know what's cool? You know what? <laughs> what? That you know what would be really good? If you can find a Red Bull that you could smoke. Oh. If you invented a Red Bull. A you Red could Bull you smoke. could smoke. So then you get the darts and the energy drink. That would be amazing. It's, what would you call something like that? One stop shopping? Or call it Wife Beater? It would be. Oh, oh man, it's very white trashy. But you know yeah. what? It would get you from point A to point B. <laughs> you could be smoking well, and having a drink at the same time, but all in one. I think that's what you would so you'd probably be, take. You'd be drinking the Red Bull, but you would be inhaling it, and then you'd be blowing out smoke. <laughs> Yeah, and then you just prime yourself for, like, a bank robbery. That's something you just take a blast of a, a smoke of Red Bull, and then you go in yeah. and just pull out a, a quick well, Tarantino. It, it would be beautiful. It would be beautiful if we could do that. If you could have, you know... Um, yeah, but the downside some people is... people would say, if you, uh, that's kind of like crystal mess. No, 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 no. Crystal meth is completely different. <laughs> this is government sanctioned. Shards? We call them shards. Shards? What? <laughs> Do you want some shards, bro? How many? You get, them, you get them in a pack, they, but they look like road flares. When you light yeah, them they're, up. They're, they're, they're beautiful. Yeah, they're, they're just shards. Well, let's g give but me a... shards is another name for crystal meth. Give me a, a and <laughs> and I'm not a tweaker, everybody. 
I don't tweak. There's one thing that I haven't done is Chris. I see. I've done a lot of drugs in my life. You you're, know, I've done touring the cocaine, the acid, the mushrooms, the marijuana, the pills, the and the booze. Have you ever gotten a fist my, my, my daddy taught me how to drink, you know. Did he? Yeah, when we were like... <laughs> he used to pour on whiskey my, on his cock. On my, on my <laughs> fifth birthday party, <laughs> on your he fifth? said you're going to drink like a man. And then he whipped out like, his dick. Dad, I'm only five years old, and he was spiking my Kool-Aid. <laughs> Jonestown. <laughs> Jonestown. And then that's what started it all. Would Plus, you... I'm part native and Canadian, so that's just the recipe for disaster right there. And then you throw in being an entertainer and a comedian and a wannabe wrestler. Let's, oh, you're fucked. Let's, uh, let's, oh, can we swear on this yeah, iPod yeah, yeah. thing? But I want to get back to uh, Vancouver and what it was like, because once I'd done my first show, we kind of formed a, a comedy alliance together and we were well, quite determined was, to get stage yeah, time. Yeah, we went, to, we went to Yuck Yucks. We worked um, and. uh Remember the we talking went to Yuck stick? Yucks open mics, and then we would do all these shitty open mics like the talking stick. Yeah. Remember the talking <laughs> stick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was great. Nobody They didn't there. want us back. It's just a stick and you, you talk into it. I think it was a broom handle. You turned over a table but, at a poetry reading. And the show is a show. <laughs> I remember, no money involved. Remember when the no uh, money. Remember when we did the boat, and they didn't want oh, us back. We did. It'd be like twice. Vancouver they, is a beautiful city, man. Vancouver is like the most beautiful city I think I've I've been in with all the traveling that I've done. Yeah, but you, you know, you you see, I'm trying to get into what you've been do- over the last decade because we started together, and I did my first show June. 20th of 96 and that's so when we met and um you stayed around north america where i kind of did everything but so the united states is as foreign as it can get to me i've i've pretty much been to yes, most yeah, I've places been all in america i haven't been anywhere all up, up in the, the coast. united states in the u.s of a all right well i get a lot and of people. we're gonna pause now no jason we're gonna pause now and pledge allegiance <laughs> Bye, <laughs> Brad. Break. I'm gonna. Are you an American? Well, hold on a second. So, we use you, you tour. Okay, where are your? Fe- give me some best and worst case scenarios of where you've been and shows that you've done in the United States. Okay, give me your top five favorite cities to perform in in the United States. Because this top is top five all- shows or comedy clubs. No, let's just say let's start with cities. What's your top five favorite cities in North America? Oh, well, you know what? I love playing in Portland. Portland okay. Harvey's Comedy Club is treating me so well. That's fantastic. Um, that's going to be at the top of the list. What what, what makes um, Portland... Uh, it's kind of very kind of hipster from what I understand. Like, what what's the scene like there? It kind of... I would think it's more like San Francisco in that way. It's kind of hippie. Do you like San Francisco and L.A.? Yeah, yeah. San Francisco. cool. So California has some great gigs. I mean, it's got like a lot of clubs. Oh, my favorite, one of my favorites, Redway, California. You do a show in the theater. Oh, and yeah. you're right, you're about a couple hours north of San Francisco. And you're right on the ocean and everybody, are they're all hippies and they're lit. You swear to God, you think you're back in the 60s. Really? It's like, when you when you drive into the town, you're playing. This is the body of the age of Aquarius. Oh my God! Aquarius. And then, and then you know, Canned Heat's playing. I think Canned Heat is from there. I don't Going know. Going up to the country where I want to go. That sounds Going terrible. Going to some place I've never been. Be- oh, I can't sing. Yeah, did that- you take singing lessons? No, but I did kill a nun with a nine iron one weekend. <laughs> <laughs> she pulled a cross on me and I panicked. <laughs> Malachi! Malachi! Oh, I love singing. I do karaoke. I you love are doing because you karaoke. have no shame. Do you do karaoke? No, I have. I have a thing called self-esteem, and I've never drank in <laughs> that much that I want to do karaoke. Oh, I don't care. I, don't, I know I, you don't care. Point, I don't give a shit That's what one, anybody thinks of me. One of the I get things, up, I sing, I what, sing songs 
And then I sang, like last week, I sang I Won't Back Down by Christopher Walken. <laughs> and I was like, I, you know, I won't back down. No, I won't back down. Hey, baby, there ain't no easy way out. <laughs> And then, like, all the people who were stupid who didn't know Christopher Walken, they were like, "No, God, this guy's a really bad singer. <laughs> I know, because that's all they have. <laughs> Do you ever go to these small towns where they're doing karaoke, and you know where they, where they perform that this is the only good thing that's left in their life, and they sing their fucking hearts out like they're going to be discovered? So oh, yeah. bingo they, they pig they stumbles so up there. They, and some of them, they, 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 they try so hard. Oh, they, they love it. So cool. They think and you got to be supportive of them, though. It's like you got to be supportive. But I just go up there and do my take thing. Over a chair. And it's kind of like that in comedy. And I've gotten in trouble because I do my thing when I was supposed to be clean. Uh, and then I went, oh, you know, your college kids, they want dirty. They want dirty. No you, you know. But the university why gets funded. You don't work as enough in, a, in the United You should be famous by now. Like you, like, I mean, you work all over the world, you know, but the United States, is, it's, it's very been, politically correct. you know why? Because they're PC. They're too PC here. Yeah. Most definitely. I've noticed Everything it. has a label on it. Everything has got to be this way and that way. And it's just like, give me an uncensored show. Isn't it supposed to be freedom of speech? And it, there's nothing wrong with clean material. Don't get me wrong. I love clean material. You're funny, you're funny. It doesn't matter if you're dirty or clean. No. But some clubs think you have to be a certain way. What's a, what's a, what's... So, you know what I did? You know what I did? Check this out. I'm a ventriloquist now. <laughs> you didn't know that? You haven't heard? No, no. And I got a puppet. And the puppet <laughs> talks dirty. Uh, speaking of dirty so puppets. So if you got a puppet... Puppets are, you know, and then and then if the puppet's too dirty, you don't get banned. The puppet does. Yeah, you could just throw him into a wood yeah. chipper and go, "You're fired, asshole." Yeah, yeah, you, you they could fire the puppet. But then you got to travel with a puppet. You ever try and fuck a hooker while a puppet's sitting on a bar stool next to you? Oh my god! He just stares. You know, it just the stares. Trucking. You know the. Yeah, I got a great drinking story for you because my first girlfriend in college cheated on me with a ventriloquist. <laughs> he wasn't even a good ventriloquist. He was terrible. I see your lips moving. I got drunk one night. I found this puppet. I ripped the head off of it and I pissed in its neck and then walked out of the, out of the party and then I mooned everybody. <laughs> and it was the wrong dorm. But, hey, you cheated on me. <laughs> yeah, that's why that puppet's got a head full of piss right now. That puppet, stupid, um, his name was Mark Boiteau. <laughs> so if you're listening he's probably to this working podcast, a, he's pro- asshole, he's, you cheated on me. <laughs> he, he cheated on you or she cheated on you? No, she no, he cheated on me because we were having an affair too on her. <laughs> you know. Hey, I swing both ways. Hey, what happens on the road? Canadian and American. No, no, no. You know what I mean. I'm not gay. Only on Friday. On the road, on the road. But she cheated on me. Yeah, how did you find out? I walked in on my girlfriend eating another girl's pussy. Oh, well, see, that's not really cheating. You're with another yeah. girl. No, when... Then when you join in, lied. and then you have a threesome. Yeah, that kind of happened, too. It was That was a bad night. I almost committed two murders. <laughs> it was pretty bad. It was the only time in my life I, I told them I was going to paint the walls with their blood, and uh, they shrieked. And I'm like, oh, fuck. You know- <laughs> I can't. I could keep the torsos. But the rest of it's got to go. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, Jason? We need to have a reunion tour. We need to have, like, homecoming. Yeah, I'm going to come out to... Like, you know, in high anyway. schools when they have reunions and shit? We need to have 
Well, here's the people I want to pick. You, of course, myself, um, Seth Rogen, who is also with us, yeah. and Damon Schritter. Yeah, who else was in that? Uh, John Beveridge? And Mark Brody. Remember John Beveridge? Right. Mark Pooley. God, Mark Pooley. He's living in Toronto now. Yeah, that got the whole thing rolling. He doesn't. This is so typical. Somebody's calling me while I'm having an important interview here. <laughs> Maybe it's probably work. That's how it works. That's Whenever how it is. They go, the phone, yeah, and then they go. Whatever yeah. you're doing, they won't call you when you want them to call you. It's a girl. Oh, no, some teen runaway trying to get out of the rain. What kind of girls? <laughs> what, what kind of girls do you date? I just picture some girl in the lovey, lover boy T-shirt with a black eye and a Hulk Hogan headband. That's the kind you of little something, brother. Little Hulk maniacs, brother. <laughs> you know, I got to tour with the wrestlers. Yeah, that was tell... one of the highlights of my career. So how I knew, like, you know, I... right from go, you're a big wrestling fan and stuff, but how did that all come about? Like, how did you... Well, Roddy Piper saw my show in Portland, Oregon, and he saw, thought, oh, I could do something with this guy because he does a one-man show of his life where he was doing it before. Not now, but I yeah. hope he does it again. Um, How was and, it? Uh, he said, would you like to be able to come on the road with me because I'm doing a tour. And uh, and I was, what I was, what they were paying me for, I was a stooge okay. in, the, in the audience. So I would heckle Roddy Piper, and then he would bring <sighs> me up on stage. And I said I wanted to be a wrestler. And then I would do all these wrestling impressions and, ah. you know. and <laughs> How how was the response? The crowd loved it because they came to see but, him. Well, they were a wrestling crowd. They yeah. were a wrestling crowd. Did so they go they crazy? Loved me. That's cool. What know? a great gig. Um, mean Gene Okerlund was there. I met a whole bunch of wrestlers. I remember one time. Who were you starstruck by? Met, so, what's that? Who were you starstruck by? Who was like somebody you were like, yeah. holy fuck. Besides I think Piper, the, the, that, the that goes struck for me was Roddy Piper, but we became good friends. Like, I would hang out. I know his family and everything. So I know Roddy now. I've known him for years. But um, I think Stone Cold Steve Austin <laughs> was a little starstruck. That's wild. Because I was doing you, if he punched you, If he punched you straight I was in the doing mouth. Stone Cold, and then I got a wrestling ticket. Because I always give me, give me wrestling tickets and stuff. And I, Stone Cold Steve Austin came up to me. And he goes, you got to make it fun of me on the radio station this morning? Oh, shit. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I was just doing the, your voice. And then I didn't, you know, <laughs> don't mind me to what, take your pretty little girlfriend and uh, have, a, have a little beer on Stone Cold. And I'm like, okay. All right, thank you. I was... <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I, I, if he I, walked I up mean, to you. I meant, um, you know. Hey, Brad, also, Brad, Brad. Yeah. If if you were there with Stone Cold and your girlfriend, and Stone Cold slapped your girlfriend across the face, would you react or would you ask for an autograph? <laughs> so if Stone Cold, he just walks up. You've never met him before. Who, whoever, I got nobody no, now, Jason. I'm so no, no, no. lonely. Is, my hand turns me down. Th this is this I'm is ridiculous. This is okay, but fixation. back in the day. I was a chick magnet. Okay, listen, though. You know. You're sitting there. You're at a, a wrestling uh, seminar or a, a convention. You put out your hand. Stone Cold has been told to come and say hello to you. He walks over. You put out your hand, and then with his right hand, he smacks your girlfriend, like, full crank across the face. Do you <laughs> ask for an autograph, or do you go to her defense? I... I... <laughs> When I ask for an autograph after he hit my girlfriend, <laughs> yeah, or or attack him as as to fight for your girlfriend. You put it this way: you've only been dating this girl I for would a month. fight for my girlfriend, but since yeah, you, I have no, no, no girlfriend no, 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 no. now, listen, listen, and Brad, I'm like, uh, there's more no, to it. I, you've depending been, on the girl, yeah, you've only been with her for a month, and she's been a cunt all day because she hates wrestling. And she's just being a cunt. And you just so <laughs> happened ran in the Stone Cold. Oh, she, okay. She's been a cunt she's been, all she, day. She hates wrestling. She's, I would 
I would go. <laughs> I wasn't a bad yet, Stone Cold. I would start imitating him, and it'd, and it'd be like. <laughs> she just told you that she you fucked know, your brother. I her again, Stone Cold. She just fucked. She fucked She'd your brother. Like, just fucked throw him for a left loop. She bangs your brother. When you see it coming. <laughs> she fucks your brother and crashes your car, and you just finished one of the biggest arguments in your relationship. And Stone Cold fucking open hand smacks her to the ground. Do you jump uh, on Stone Cold? I would. You know what I would do? And you've been smoking all day. I would put her in the camel clutch until she tapped out. <laughs> just, just to make her forget. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you know, it's like a double team in wrestling, and then Stone Cold you is You would already, double team your you know, date with Stone I'm having a piss right now on the phone. Would you have a four? Hear that? Would you have a, a, four, a threesome with Captain Lou Bano? Stone Cold Steve Austin and Cindy Lauper. Oh, Cindy Lauper. In in the eighties, Cindy Lauper. What would happen? Those are threesome right there. It's, uh, like um, a Cindy Lauper, Captain Lou Albano, and who? And Stone Cold Steve Austin. Stone Cold Steve Austin. And what was the question? Well, you're there. There's a threesome going to go down, and they've pulled you into the bedroom, and you get a triple up on there's a hole for everybody and because you were last picked you gotta go shithole while Steve takes pussy and um, Captain Lou Obano takes mouth so you gotta get fuck this girl in the ass and make eye contact with Lou Obano <laughs> and, st- and, st- and Steve, how much are they paying me and Stone Cold's <laughs> nut stink of Cool Ranch Doritos Oh, do I get food stamps? <laughs> get food stamps. <laughs> and then Cindy Lauper asks you to beat her with a coat hanger. Well, Captain Lou will bang oh. her, bangs her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, he, <laughs> he's using the coat hangers in. <laughs> oh, man. We got to get together, man. We haven't seen each other since... <laughs> Man, since the Philadelphia Flyers had no hockey helmets. Yeah, man. <laughs> it was orange straight. <laughs> it's been Two a while. Two Canadians. I know it's been a while. It's been how long now? You've been, you've been you know, Canadians years. are so strong in comedy. Yeah, man. We've got a good bloodline. They're like hockey players. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the cold temperatures and the traveling. What's your least favorite place? I think they're tougher. What's your least favorite place to perform in in the U.S.? What's the worst club, worst city, worst show ever? Unfortunately, that would be in Canada. <laughs> Sam and Arm? Uh, Prince George, British Columbia. All right. So you drive, how long is the drive to Prince George from the other gig? I was on, I was on crutches because I had <laughs> just started comedy, and I did the splits in my act. Remember when I did <laughs> yeah. the... Dance bit. Yeah, with, uh, I do a dance bit. I still do a dance Mick bit. Jagger? It's not the same as it was, but it's I'm, you know I'm getting older now. I can't just do the splits. But I did the splits, and there was a table leg behind the bar, and I struck it, oh. and uh, <laughs> and then I was uh, um, on crutches. I, I dislocated <laughs> my knee. So the next week, and I had to finish the rest of the tour, and you know how physical I am on stage. I had to finish the tour on crutches in Prince George. We did a show, and we went up during a hockey game, and we were ta- and they, oh. they they refused to t- uh, shut the TV off. Oh no! People were throwing bottle caps at me, oh. cigarette butts, <laughs> and and one, and they haven't one introduced guy came you up yet. And said, you're about as funny as a dead skunk. <laughs> Last I looked, dead skunks are not hilarious. I didn't know you had family in that town. There's been a few that have been really bad. There's been a... See, this is the thing about comics. They tell me that they had a great show, right? That's your job. You know, you go out and have a great show... Oh, I kicked ass last night, and uh, I met this girl. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear the horror story. Yeah. I want to hear the the guy that you goes up on stage on and gets knocked out with a table tray and pile drive. I want that story. 
Because that's the shit you remember. <laughs> that's called Hamilton on a Wednesday. You get a glass smashed over yeah. your face waiting for a bus. You don't remember you don't remember the great shows. Not that I'm this hot comic like the you know, but I've had a lot of good shows and yeah, they're great, but I always remember those bad ones. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you learn from them. And the, I never really look at them, even though it might be as painful as it is to your ego when it, it doesn't kind of unfold the way you anticipated. It's still a, uh, you pick up skills. You develop, you know, people that play really nice clubs consistently. My problem is, is when I know a crowd doesn't like me, I turn on them. I'm trying to correct that. Yeah, yeah, because once you lose your cool, then they really lose their appreciation for you. It's just being professional, you know, and regardless, yeah, sometimes you got to kind of go, <clears throat> you know. I mean, you, and then I turn on them because I figure in my stupid little head, if I'm going to be, if I'm going to suck at the show and eat a shit sandwich, you're going to remember it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, have, I, I do pour a lot of gas on the fire. If there's a point of no return and they're really, I've done everything I can and uh, I can really, really ruin anybody's night. I actually had a, Right. Can you believe it? In what's the, the what's the wor- what's the worst thing that you've done on stage? Uh, probably perform. Oh, I know you've done some pretty wild stuff on stage. I have no regrets. I have no regret. Everything I've done has always been part of the process. But I, I know I, I always kind of like to push boundaries. And you would have been proud of me, Jason. You would have been proud of me. Fantastic. This is what I did. I got fired, of course. I did it at a, a little, um, God, what was it called? A little bar in Seattle, one of the open mics where you had mine for 50 bucks. You should have uh, it. I was drinking that night. Yeah. I ended up. Woo, the story already I starts up, good. <laughs> I ended up teabagging somebody's drink. With your nuts. You put your balls in somebody's drink? Yeah. I pulled my balls off and I teabagged somebody's drink. <laughs> but here's the thing. I already had money in my pocket. I already got paid. <laughs> uh, so that was it. That was the last time. Apparently, I think that's violating some health thing. Balls in... What kind of Cold, drink was it? Hell yeah. Was it a hot coffee? Mocha? Frappuccino? I, what was it? I had... Uh, what's that? You ever had anyone take a swing? What's the worst morning? Okay, what? Ab- okay, say you're you're on the road. You go home with some hog that you've clearly been drinking and made a bad choice. How do you get rid of her? Yeah, they've got to be drinking to go with me. Have you seen my teeth? <laughs> <laughs> Even Steve Buscemi goes, man, I'm glad I don't look like him. <laughs> <laughs> Was that Rocky? Yeah, I got a little bit of crooked teeth. Have you ever thought about braces? My dad, my dad was too poor to go to the dentist. <laughs> Yeah, I, know, I had to get braces. My teeth were, like, kicked over tombstones for a while. Yeah, my uh, my teeth are... Well, the, my teeth are great. I mean, they're, they're white, they're clean. They're just a little crooked on one side. Do you still but have you know your... What? You still have your I look kind of like Jewel. I got that little tooth that sticks out. But she fixed her teeth, too. And I liked her better when she had crooked teeth. Who? Jewel. Oh, she got her tooth fixed? See, you could be a celebrity and a star and still have crooked teeth. Yeah, Madonna, Lawrence Fishburne. But there's also a lot of homeless people. You can't people do commercials through the fruit of the loom in your underwear and be smiling. No, but you could do, um, you know, maybe a poster for an upcoming like competition, like a hammer fight or something like that. Yeah, you can do. You can, <laughs> you can do all of that, man. All right, speaking of hammer fights. You, who do you think would win in a hammer fight, Rosie O'Donnell or Ellen DeGeneres? What's the question? Who would win in a hammer fight, Ellen DeGeneres or Rosie O'Donnell in a hammer fight? Uh, and there's the winner. Gets, Ellen, Ellen DeGeneres would kick her ass. I know. We're talking Rosie, coked out, drunk. I... I don't like Rosie O'Donnell. I think she is uh, not funny, um, and, and and it just 
but I do have respect for Ellen. I think she's got a kind of wild side to her. Yeah, she's cool. And uh, Rosie O'Donnell's terrible. I heard she doesn't bend her knees when she shits. No, I was thinking of somebody else. No, Rosie O'Donnell's all, actually, Rosie O'Donnell's <laughs> all right. I was thinking of... Um, Richard Simmons? Some other old school comedian, woman comedian. Oh, she played... Uh, <sighs> God, I can't remember. Betty Rubble in the movie The Flintstones, which was terrible. That was Rosie O'Donnell. That wasn't... Was that Rosie O'Donnell? Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting me... That was Rosie O'Donnell. Of course, Rose, the hell was her? She's terrible. <laughs> We're talking about live-action kid shows. The Flintstones movie wasn't very good. But you, you're a big. It was terrible. You're... Well, here's the thing. As a kid, when I first started discovering masturbation, I have a confession. I had a big crush on Betty Rubble. Really? Yeah, I did. I did. I did have a big crush on uh, uh, Betty Rubble, the cartoon, not Rosie O'Donnell. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> like, Brad. I had a crush on her. I was going to ask her out, but she's a cartoon. Yeah, Brad, Betty was uh, also quite thin in the cartoon and had non-truck driver <laughs> features. Rosie O'Donnell has shoulders like a bricklayer. <laughs> <laughs> Rosie O'Donnell. Oh my God! <laughs> would you, would you, if you were forced to eat her out at gunpoint, do you think you could make her come? Rosie O'Donnell? No, Don Knotts. Yeah, Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would, I would eat Don Knotts before I <laughs> ate Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> From behind or face to face? <laughs> <laughs> Rosie O'Donnell. I mean. <laughs> I, Don Knotts is dead, and I would still eat Don Knotts <laughs> over Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> and, and Don Knotts. Oh, my God. You'd rather eat a dead well, Don Knotts. Yeah, you did oh, no. better Don Knotts. Right. Remember when you did that? <laughs> oh, you want to take I'll be out in the woods yeah. and give him a whack? Go right ahead. I, I think I'm going to put that in. In, on the internet, I need some more ridicule from the masses. It's I think I have my first two. I have uh, yeah, I think I have my my first two shows on tape, and uh, that was one of my. I did an impression of Don Knotts. Is it is it is it, is it, is it, is it camp council? I don't know what it was. It was pretty. Yeah, it was bad. Um, Man, I, I just revealed a lot about myself on the iPod. Who you got a lot of followers, right? <laughs> no, no. This 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 goes right from my recorder into my trash can on my computer. <laughs> I don't want this out in the public. So I just want to hear I'm my own voice. I'm listening to this right now. I'm on my computer. Watching porn at the same time while I'm talking to you, I can manage to, to do that. You will be able to download this yeah, on man. your phone on Monday. I'm look Rosie O'Donnell. I'm typing Wait. in Rosie O'Donnell right Are you, now with one hand. Okay, how about uh, this not for red tube? How about this for a threesome? Because I think you have a crush on Rosie O'Donnell, man. Do you think you could bang Chaz Bono and Rosie O'Donnell at the same time? <laughs> 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 you could fuck Chaz right in the bag. <laughs> I am never jerking out to Rosie O'Donnell again. Oh, but Chaz Bono's a peach. Oh. <laughs> She'd be like, come on my scar. I'm like, which one? The one near your pussy or the one near your balls? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gross. <laughs> I can't eat today now. I made myself sick. It happens once once in a blue moon where I make myself nauseous. Oh, yeah. You made it. <laughs> oh, my God. There's this one picture of Rosie O'Donnell. It's hot, man. I think she's got a beard. Could you? Would you eat her out legs behind the head or from behind? Oh, dude, I would... Uh... <laughs> Dude, I got to 
start drinking again before I do that. <laughs> Maybe we should tell the audience you got uh, you're doing a bunch of Disney cruises this summer and uh, come out and see your show. <laughs> oh God! Remind me not to eat while I'm talking to Jason Ralph. <laughs> I just threw up in my mouth. <laughs> well, let's talk about our our kind of first meeting and stuff like. We were kind of lepers, I think, in the city of Vancouver, the two of us. We were kind of new. Stage time was, we were. was very... We were. I think we're in the comedy community as lepers. I'm still considered a leper. Yeah, but they, there was no real, you know, a lot of stage time in Vancouver and stuff. If there was Olympics for comedy, we would be in the Special Olympics. <laughs> yeah, it's a good Olympics, though. I always I looked at Canada as a great comedy college, an Ivy League college, and in England was more of a Ivy League university in comedy. And then America is the uh, Special Olympics. Because yeah, uh, they measure value. Yeah, we're, Their values are I'm like, different. I'm like Division Two. <laughs> mm. yeah. I'm like North Dakota State. Well, what's, what's been going on? Like uh, we Middle Tennessee Tech. If I was a college. What's one of the most racist redneck places you've ever been to? Right. Where? Exactly. <laughs> what is the what? What is the most racist redneck place that you've ever done comedy? The most racist place I've been? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you're, you got to kind of sidestep and go, did I just hear that? What the fuck? What year is this? What year is it? You know, I'm... I've been to Alabama, is it- and and I've been to Mississippi, and I've been now through down there, and and man, they don't. I mean, on the West Coast, we just integrate. We date black women. We date whoever you know. But down there, they got this stigma attached about everybody. But you know, and and. I don't like racism. Personally, I hate it. It's one of my pet peeves. I hate racism. Plus, I'm not a white person anyway. I'm part native. Yeah. Well, racism goes... You know. It's Not all white people are racist. <laughs> but a lot of them are. No. Well, there's a lot of white people that aren't racist. If you want to find racism, go to the South, my friend. How did you, how did you see it? Like, is it just people just dropping end bombs everywhere? And... It, it's actually gotten a lot better, they say. You know, mm. um, there's no more public hangings. <laughs> uh, I want to <laughs> see. I want to see public execution. Um, would you? Did you watch Game and, of Thrones, Brad? Do you watch Game of Thrones? Game of Thrones, yeah, it's a good show. So it's a good show. Don't you it's think... not as good as Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad was the best show. Mm. Now, but Game of Thrones is like the X-rated version of Lord of the Rings. Do you think they should bring back public executions like the stocks, beheadings, hangings? Oh man, it was it was bad, man. Yeah, but it don't... was bad back in the day. Do you think? Can that... you imagine doing comedy? <laughs> <laughs> you know. There's some really bad gigs that we haven't done. You know what would be really cool to For do? Is king. put yourself in a time machine, go back and do the Roman Colosseum. And oh. then the emperor would come out with either a thumbs up or a thumbs down. We'd yeah. be dead. They put lions. I don't want to. Did you hear what happened to Joe? He got eaten by a lion. Tough gig, huh? That's a shitty gig. That is a shitty gig when you get eaten by some a lion. Grizzly that bear. one sucks. Well, okay. What if you were gonna do a gig in the Coliseum and you you bomb? What animal would you be want to be killed by? A ferret? Uh, no, no. I'm thinking. Um, I'm thinking. Uh, let me think about that one. What animal would I like to be eaten by? And you're on your giraffe um, at the time, so you're on top of a giraffe in the Coliseum, back in time, and you've just tanked. You did the old blow up the balloon with the asshole trick, and it bombed. <laughs> it bombed big time. It's been killing all week in the village, and then you pull it out for the king, 
and his wife, the queen, <laughs> throws up over the side of the Coliseum. <laughs> and he goes, he gives two thumbs down. So not only you're on a giraffe with a shitty balloon hanging out of your ass, but now they're going to release <laughs> two animals to kill you. What are these animals? I'm going to go with a tiger because they're, they're pretty tiger? hot. Uh, so you're in the back. A tiger's going to jump up and grab you right off, snap you off the back of that fucking giraffe like an apple. Yeah. Well, and it's the best <laughs> way to go because at least tigers are hot. They're good looking. Tigers are beautiful. And you so do- at least you're getting attacked and mauled by something. It's it, it's good looking. Okay, so Hulk Hogan. Kind of like, like, you know, you, yeah, like, you know, a, a groupie's. What? A groupie tiger? <laughs> Just big, fat, stripy. But instead, you're getting eaten alive and killed. Yeah. Do you get groupies on the road? That ain't fun for anybody. Do you get groupies on the road? <laughs> Traveling folk? Hey, man, I didn't know you were on Red Tube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got my own channel there. Yeah, I I can't watch you having sex. That's just, oh. that's just wrong. It, the the uh, the local police department call it a hate crime. I call it love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've tried dating girls in this. I do anything for money right now. I think I would uh, shoot porn. Would you? I would, right now, I would shoot porn. Cause, plus, I don't know what sex is like anymore, because I haven't had it for a few months. So I have to look online to see what it is. Just get some... Uh, well, porn to me. Get a hockey lace and two chicken breasts and cinch them together, clamp it in the door frame, and just bang the shit out of it. <laughs> right? Oh. Man. Squirt a bit of tuna juice on it and some barbershop floor hair. Why does this happen? Why does this happen? My bowels are calling me, dude. You got to take a shit? I got to take a shit. Well, on that note, let, we'll wrap up the show. And uh, thanks for being on, Brad. It was, it was always good talking to you. And do uh, you got anything coming up? Oh, today? dude, it's been such a pleasure for you to get a hold of me and 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 just relive old times. And we got to do it again. We got to go on the road. I like to... I open for you in the Philippines. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. People love me over there. I will definitely make an effort. I'm going to try and make it out to uh, Portland and Seattle and all that stuff uh, in the. Yeah, summertime. and do the vice. I got I got a passport now, so I can travel worldwide, bruh. Wicked man. We well, got a Twitter handle. I was in the Bahamas. You, you know, Wicked. and uh, what's your yeah, social I've done media? Some, uh, I haven't done like, uh, but I haven't done international gigs like you've been in Europe and yeah, Africa man. and holy crap, you're doing places like, you know, like you've done everything in the world. Like you've been to other planets like Uranus, <laughs> you know, you ever That's done comedy in Uranus? Yeah, I do all my corporate work there. They can't hear you scream. <laughs> in Uranus? <laughs> <laughs> what do you have? Do you have Twitter, Brad? Do you use Twitter at all? Any social media, Instagram, that stuff? Tell people where they can find you. Stuff on. You want to spell your name? B R A D. I'm on Twitter, Facebook. Um, um, what You're else? Registered sex Am offender. Just start with Facebooking me, and because my phone is retarded, and the whole Twitter thing. Um, I got an account there, and uh, I got to get, you know, I'm a terrible business person. I got to have somebody walk me through it. Well, get on and, that uh, so people can come terrible. and see your I mean, show. I have all these access to things, and, and then I'm like, oh, no, no, I don't want to do it. Oh, no. I go on Facebook, and, and, you know, but you can get a hold of me, add me, Brad Brake, B-R-A-K-E. And uh, my motto is Breaking Brad. <laughs> so, you know, that's my new, I'm making t-shirts, Breaking Brad. Mm. Like the show, B-R-A-K-I-N-G. Yeah. It's going to be dope, yo. Well, let's make it, it's and, coming up 20 years for us for doing comedy now, so let's. 
Oh, dude, mm-hmm. we're going to be doing comedy. I think we're going to be do, doing comedy in another lifetime dimension. <laughs> like, we're going to go to heaven, and we're going to have our own place, but nobody's going to show up, so we're going to be like, dude, <laughs> We've remember been that? doing comedy remember? for eight hours, but nobody's here in heaven. We also remember. We worked hard, remember? so hard for this, and now nobody's here. Remember the Slaughterhouse Comedy Club, where all the, the sides of beef would hang out, oh. and, <laughs> and people would come you in. Remember when we did the manhole? <laughs> <laughs> that was a horrible gig. It was right next to the talking stick at the five o'clock That's orange. That's right. The strip club. <laughs> oh man, there was some horrible open mic. They weren't even. Oh, open the mics. memories! The memories was just like we were so broke. I mean, I'm still broke, but that was like. <laughs> yeah, it was. Wow. Rough. It's been a good run. Dude, I was, I was on main stage, <laughs> blowing guys for bus change. <laughs> well, have a good uh, have a good uh, weekend, Brad. Yeah, you too, bro. And keep in touch. And uh, I love you like a brother. And you know what? It was so awesome to connect with you again because we go way back from the beginning, way man. back from right from the beginning, and uh, right from the beginning. And it will be from the beginning, and it will be from. From the end, when we're 85. Yeah, murder, suicide. And I'm teabagging somebody's drink, and you're going to laugh your fucking ass off. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Brad. <laughs> Have a great one. And, All right, uh, buddy. Thanks for being on the podcast. Talk to you soon. All right, man. Talk to you soon, bro. Don't kiss me on the mouth. Don't ask if you're hurting me. And if you hear the safe word, stop what you're doing immediately. Do you have pantyhose? (laughs) 